Hey guys, I know it's been a while since you've seen me. I've been busy with this group of dum-dums trying to figure out how to exploit them for the big dirty. They got one guy who walks around with a top hat and supposedly keeps a uh, rabbit in there that's got claws and a human hand for some reason. There's another guy that I kind of have concern about if we're to really dig our claws in and squeeze these people for it, for all the peanuts they have, and that's Lord Falcone. I really think that if we were to tangle with him toe-to-toe, he'd put a hurting on us for sure. Well, I'm going to figure some more out. I'm hoping I'm making in good with Merida. She's another one and that's in this same group. She seems to be a bit more open to give and take as far as these things are concerned, if you know what I mean. I guess, boys, what I'm trying to say is just uh, hold on to your hats and uh, let's see where this thing takes us. By the end of it, we'll be eating caviar and drinking champagne out of gold chalices. Last time on Lost Legends of Scadriel. You have a floor plan and general guard patrols for Lord Spook's uh, security around his mansion. Hello, Snee. I hear you have some information about Atium. What's your price? I got something else I can bring to the table. If you want to give us both of them for the floor plan and this bird, that would be a fair deal, I believe, on for fair market price. How Sarah Teller? They've got some adium, but it's not located inside of their house. So Tony would immediately suggest that we, we stay at, at his place. I, I think Lord Falcone would be seated at the nearest table, just drumming his fingers like incessantly until everyone else sat down and started our significant planning. Can I go outside and rob some random person walking down the street? Well, then I want to um, reference my notebook and see if I can get any dirt on Eric Keller to blackmail them. I would grab Dark Amancy over there and kind of just start talking smack about Eric Keller. She's seen some things. She's heard some things. We don't know what, but she knows dark secrets. Imagine getting pounded by a guy like that. Hello everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Lost Legends of Scadriel Mistborn Adventure Game Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Trevor. You can find me on the 17th Shard forums as Fifth of Daybreak, and with me I have the rest of the Lost Legends of Scadriel. I am John, go by Clovermite on the uh, 17th Shard forums, and I play Tony Darkomancy. I'm David, and I play the disenfranchised noble Lord Falco. My name is Brian, and my character's name is Taj Mill. I'm Kelly, and I go by Merida. Before we get started, there's a couple of metagaming things that I'd like to take care of. Something first that I should have taken care of last time is some advancements. First of all, one advancement to everyone in the group for a well-played session. So if everyone wants to open up their characters and give themselves each an advancement. For Merida and Taj Mill, you each get an advancement for dealing with Snee and getting the information. Merida, you get an extra advancement for finding out that secret about House Eric Keller. Tony gets an advancement for providing the lodging. Falcone gets a, an advancement for attempting to keep the group on task while in character. And Tajmil gets an advancement for exceptional role-playing in Stealing to Need, and also a nod and a wink for that advancement. So wait, we get how, how many? Uh, Tajmil, you'll get three. Merida will get Whoa. two. Tony will get two, and Falcone will get two. With that taken care of, I want to clarify a rule. Merida, uh, from now on, whenever you use your book to get information, that's going to count as a resource rule with all of the inherent costs. So that's going to t take one of your resources spent, and so you're only going to be able to do that uh, twice in a game bef uh, before you need a short or long rest breather in order to recuperate those resources. Tony, I also would like to clarify 
One, how big your hat is, and two, how big Fluffles is. I don't have dimensions. <laughs> well, is this a <laughs> massively oversized hat or a massively undersized Mistwraith? Oh, massively undersized Mistwraith. Like, I was thinking, like, the size of a small cat. Okay, that makes sense. Or, like, closer to a rabbit, because it's a mist rabbit. Gotcha. And then, as far as the servants that are uh, in the uh, lodgings that you found, are those hired by you with the money you asked your parents for, or are those hired by your house? Well, I thought the point of what I'd said earlier, like, did you rule against this being, like, my place? It, it's your place, but um, I just want to make sure that, like, you set it all up, or were, did you go and did you say, I need some servants from the house servants? Oh, uh, the latter. I didn't do, Tony didn't do any work. He was like, hey, parents, spoil me. And they were like, all right, whatever. Okay, okay. <laughs> when we last left off, um, everybody had kind of returned back to the home base Tony had found for everybody. So this will count as a short breather. Which means that Merida and Tony, you get your uh, standings that you spent back, and then it's the next day, everybody's back at home base, and you gotta figure out what you're gonna do from here. Oh, it's the start of a new day, so I'm gonna get up, and I'm gonna go look in uh, the local markets for some breakfast. And uh, as you're leaving, Tony just kind of yawns and scratches his belly, and he hears you saying breakfast, and he's like, you know, the servants do that, right? And on that note, I'm, Tony is going to go into the dining room and, and pull open. Do we have newspapers at this time? Whatever the equivalent is. He, he's going to lounge gracefully in the kitchen while <laughs> servants bring breakfast. We, we can say that maybe a servant will bring you uh, like a news report for the day, like a, a written bullet points of everything that would be important. Uh, I would like to say Lord Falcom is probably already sitting at the table eagerly anticipating breakfast. He's just, he's been up for a while. Rise early. Good morning, Lord Falcone. I, I, I trust you slept well. Good morning. Yes, the lodging was excellent. Thank you very much. Tony is gonna, gonna quickly go pat, uh, Fluffles and start, uh, obviously rioting as per usual and, and give him some food as well. What? Where exactly is Fluffles? Like, is he on the dinner table? Like, it, like, or is he, does he have, like, a stand? What's up with him? <laughs> he, he's got, like, a, a little bed. Yeah, I'm imagining that the house is, like, there's a, there's an open, like, living room area, and in, like, the open living room area, there's, like, this small little pet bed in the corner, and then adjacent to that, there's, like, the dining area with the, you know, one of those large tables. And then the servants bring food from the kitchen, which is, you know, generally people don't go in there because that's for the servants. Of course. Okay, cool. Tajmil, were you still leaving or did you come join uh, Falcone? No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a street wanderer. I'm going to go see what the local markets have. Okay. And Merida, what are you doing? I think I'll probably walk into the room kind of trying to be unnoticed and sit like as stealthily as I can. Uh, John, did you want to give me a rioting roll or do you not care at this point? Rabbit. Nailed it. I rolled a five pair of fives, and I've got one nudge with a six. Uh, Falcom, against your best judgment, you feel something for this horrific creation. I, I think at this point, with that, Lord Falcom would immediately stand and leave the room. <laughs> like <laughs> he, he, he would, he would do so almost backing out, staring at the Mist Rabbit. But he would go find Tajmil. He's like, this is not what how I want to start my morning. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> Okay, so Tajmil and Lorkfeld Comb are heading out the door. Okay. Where to, buddy? You know the good place? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking about just going to their... Do they, they have a local bazaar or something that we can go? Yeah, there'll be like a local market uh, down by the Iron Gate River. What do we see down there? Along with the normal crowd that's usually around the market, you notice that around the what would be like the local town crier stand, a huge crowd has gathered, and there's like an air of anticipation there, but no, nobody's up there to announce the day's news yet. Well, you know me, I got to f have some money to pay for food, so I'm going to have to try and pickpocket someone. 
It's just random person standing in the crowd. Is that? Uh, can I do that? Or we're gonna say that you're gonna get a negative one for your shifty eyes, but then okay. uh, plus two for your thief and quick hands. So uh, f- roll of four. Roll four. All right. Looks like I got two fives and two ones. All right. So you steal enough money for breakfast. Awesome. Uh, do I notice this? Give me a witch. <laughs> Looks like I got two fours and a and a uh, nudge as well. Brian got two fives and a nudge, so you don't notice. Okay, cool. That that's actually metagaming what I wanted because Lord Falcon would be kind of pissed off. He would just steal for no reason. What can I say? It's a problem. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> we're working I, I'm not together, judging David, as, as Lord Falcon as me. I just. Keep it a little <laughs> on the DL. You'd All probably right, uh, disapprove. Merida and Tony, what are you doing while this is going on? Tony takes very little initiative of his own, so I'm lounging. So, Kelly, you're just going to try and listen in to what lounging Tony's doing then? No, I'm going to just kind of go through my notebook and make notes on a bunch of of my information and try to make little theories that could possibly write and just kind of pass time with the notebook. Okay, so you guys are just kind of being really passive this morning. Tony is really passive most mornings. <laughs> All right. As you do, uh, as Tony, and, or I'm sorry, as Tajmil and Falcom, uh go and get breakfast with Tajmil's unknownly newfound riches, uh, the town crier steps up onto the podium and announces for uh, everybody's attention. So uh, do you guys kind of edge closer with your breakfast in hand or do you still go about your business? That's why I'm in the town square. Attention, people of Elendel. We have had a great tragedy in this city of ours. One of the most prominent metallurgists of our time has been kidnapped. As such, we have offered the reward of a bead of atium for his safe return. This precious metal was recently found in an unbroken geode that was recovered from the pits of Hathsin, having been unmined from the Katasandra. As such a rare reward is unheard of in this time, we assume this will bring only the best and brightest. If you have any information, or would like to get some more information, in order to pursue this noble quest, please come to Lord Spook's Manor, and we will give you the best information we have as we are eagerly awaiting his return. That is all this morning. And he steps off the podium and instantly whispers across the square, turn into a deafening roar, even though everyone's trying to be quiet. I I think Lord Falcon would just lock eyes with Taj Mil and I think they both know what's going on. This is their new course of action. Yeah, and I'm like, eh, maybe not for me. The whole noble thing kind of threw me off, but I'd be willing to lend you a hand. Well, let's get back to the house and talk to Tony and uh, Merida very quickly. All right. Uh, go ahead and both of you give me a wits roll. Okay. I got two twos, a one, and a five. I got two threes, and that's it. Lord Falcom, you briefly get the feeling that somebody's watching you. Okay, can I, like, detect where from in the crowd, or is it just, like, the like you kind of like lock back. eyes with somebody, but as soon as like you you make that contact, they disappear back into the crowd. Okay, do I lose them completely, or can I like do I have the opportunity to try and like they they were off? kind of like at the edge looking towards you, and then as soon as like you made that contact, they went like beeline into the middle of the crowd. That's still like whispering did I notice to this too? Excitedly. No, you didn't. I would I would nudge Tajmil immediately and. Can I still point out this fellow, or is he just lost? No, lost. he just he just like immediately crowd surfed, basically, without crowd okay, surfing. Okay. That's not the phrase I All was right. looking for. Uh, I <laughs> I turn to Tajmil and say, "Let's go our separate ways. Why don't you stealthily follow me back to uh, the Darkomancy residence? I think someone's okay. following us. Keep an eye out for me." And All right. with, with that, 
Lord Falcom will straighten up his shoulders and walk just as proud as he possibly can, dueling canes, swinging flamboyantly, and just walking back to the Darkomancy straight shot. Okay. Winking at a few ladies as you go. Oh, no, no. Lord Falcom has no interest in the ladies unless they're of noble class. That's more of a Darkomancy <laughs> thing. He's, he's just a pimp to be a pimp. You know what I mean? On your way back, you kind of a couple streets over, you hear a, a, a hubbub, a little bit of a hullabaloo, but you can't I really do? make anything out. Both of you do, but it's it's a little bit farther away from the canal, so you don't or the river, so you don't really make anything specific out. But you know that something's going on in that direction. Can I sneak towards that way? Can I break <laughs> off and just go kind of do my own thing? Absolutely. I would continue in that way, but. It- in a different fashion, just not trying to sneak, just walking as if it's any normal day. Oh, you're heading towards the commotion? Uh, not directly towards, but, like, at an angle, too. We'll say that Tajmil gets there first, and you come up to another city square, and it's actually right outside of Lord Spook's Manor, and there's a large crowd of very, very angry peasants. And oh. they're all just angrily chanting that you know, just various phrases, you know, the words of founding didn't want this, you know, uh, harmony would be ashamed, equality oh, now, boy. you know, it just everybody seems to be up in a tizzy. I would. Uh, where's my, my bird at? Uh, that's a question for you. My bird can't do anything right now, correct? Uh, it can be a bird. Okay, I just would uh, walk through the crowd with my bird, showing it to people, trying to get some of their attention, breaking, doing my best I can to break up this angry mob with, you know, my bird and talking about things that aren't mob related. Hey guys, how about that mob related topic? (laughs) Give me the best role of your life. (laughs) What is that? How many wits? Uh, Four. Four? Okay. Okay. Oops. I'm not much about the noble stuff. Hey, let me go interrupt Ooh. this angry mob. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I like that. If there is to be a nobility to thieving, I would like there to be some, some sort of honor among thieves. Uh, I got a two, two ones, and a five. That will not do it. Oh, so what happens now? People just, like, kind of shove you out of the way, and they keep chanting. Oh, boy. Uh, Tony, uh, going back to you really quick, at the bottom of your information sheet that you've been given to you prepared by the servants, the most interesting thing on there is that there's rumors of a tribe of Kolos that's moved close to the city of Elendel. Uh Uh-oh. Merida, Merida, come here. This is your thing. Well, I come sprinting in. What is it? Give Give me a physique roll. A physique roll. I'm probably going to fall on my face. I got a six. <laughs> Just a six? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you run headfirst into a servant, and uh, you, a plate falls to the floor and shatters. Uh. I look at it and just whisper typical under my voice and try to stand <laughs> up. Merit, don't worry about it. They'll clean it. Come here, quick. I walk slightly faster than normal to get there. What is it that you're screaming about, Tony? Hey, here, th- this is your thing. You're the smart one. All right, I'm going to grab it and scan it, and then just look at the bottom. What did it say again? Uh, there's a tribe of Coloss that's nearing New Elendel, uh, rumors say. And then add to your secrets known Tony's real family name. I just have this giant smirk that comes onto my face once I find out that name. Wait. Is this a good thing? I thought Coloss were bad. I'm, no, 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 they're bad. I just I just thought of something funny, you know. Oh, I like jokes. What? What is it? You. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. Is there something on my face? There's something on my face, isn't there? Yes, it's called naivety. That sounds like some kind of cuisine my parents would like. Okay, back on topic. I don't have anything on Colas right now. I think we should go investigate it to find some stuff out. You lead, I'll follow. 
We'll jump back to uh, Lord Falcombe. You've come up to this angry, riotous mob, and you, you hear all the chanting and kind of see what's going on. And you see Tajmil sitting there, like, shoving his bird in people's faces. Let me see my bird. And then they, they like, just kind of <laughs> shove him away and keep chanting. <laughs> Do I uh, know exactly what's going on just by hearing him chant and seeing this scene? Uh, yeah, you, you have a pretty good idea, especially since you, uh, you tend, I, I would assume that you tend to agree with some of the things that have, that are being said here. At the mob? To a degree, yeah. Oh boy. I'm very upset that the nobles that are still in power still maintain their power, whereas I, I did not. But Lord Falcombe has no time for mobs. He sees this scene as like, oh, well, I'm not gonna do anything here. And he's going to just grab Tajmil by the arm and drag him away and head back to the, the manor or whatever structure that Darkomancies have. He's not even really going to say anything to Tajmil. He's just going to grab the bird if the bird's not in his hand and grab Tajmil and go. For the sake of convenience, we'll say that you guys kind of meet up just outside of the house. Then we go in and uh, we uh, immediately tell them what the town crier said. Well, like you guys kind of like run into each other as they're leaving. Um, you guys are coming in. So like you're out in the street. Oh, say, listen, guys, we got to get inside. We got some, uh, you know, information that is going to be privy to us all. I'd be like, Psst, come on, guys, let's go in this alleyway. We got stuff we need to tell you. Tony just like looks at him and then looks at Merida. And then, like, looks back and forth and just keeps doing that. So I walk over to him and start pulling him towards the alley. Tony, are you wearing your, uh, your tuxedo? Hell yeah. <laughs> and my top hat. Oh, and I would have, I would have grabbed fluffles and put them in the hat, so I'm not rioting anymore. Okay. Merida, are you burning tin? Yeah, let's say that. I am. Everybody give me a wits roll. Two sixes, a three, and a one. Tony's got nothing. Yeah, Falcom is completely not paying attention. I have two fours, two threes, and three sixes. Dang. Wow. Eagle eyes. You you hear, like, just the faintest scraping of a foot on a roof, and you look up, and you see a face peeking over the top of a roof down at you guys. And you get a full look at this guy's face, and you hear him go, oh! And then his face disappears. Because of your three nudges, we're going to say that the whole party is going to get a plus one on their next roll, whatever it is. Oh, nice. Nice. So I'm going to scream, come back here at the man. Are you are you looking up, like, pointing at the, the direction? Well, I'm looking at the direction, glaring at it, and screaming, come back here, coward. Lord Falcombe is immediately going to try and scale this roof. <laughs> okay, give me a physique roll. So I'm going to put on Secrets Known Stalker Face. Uh, Stalker Voice. Make it that way. Voice? I thought you said I saw his face. You, you did see his face. I'm going to make you have to do a roll to see if you recognize him at a later date. But because of your feet, you can recognize his voice instantly. Trevor, I got a pair of threes and a nudge. Okay, yeah, you you make it up there, and you see him He uh, just as he jumps over this roof to land on a... Well, let me see if he makes this onto another roof. Uh, yeah, just as he leaps across onto another roof. I'm just hot pursuit. All right, so we're going to go into a chase scene. Does anybody else want to try and participate into in this, or is it just going to be oh, you, bet, you know it. No, I'm definitely, if there's a chase to be had, I'm the quick-footed thief that needs Yeah, to you're, you're the guy to do this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I would uh, probably throw one of my coins down and use that to push against. Yeah, give me a roll of five for your uh, alamancy. Five? Well, don't I get one more, though, because of the bonus? Yep, because of Kelly's bonus. And then, David, I don't think we added that to yours, so go ahead and add it to your next roll for this challenge. Oh, boy, I got three. Merida, are you pursuing? No, I'm leaning against the wall, just chilling. Tony kind of looks uh, 
undecisively at Merida and then at them. And he says, screw it. It's adventure time. And then he starts like running around the buildings, but not really <laughs> running, just kind of like half-heartedly jogging. So he doesn't break up too much of a sweat in his clothes. So I'm going to see him run away and I'm going to just sigh, just annoyed and start walking after him. First thing that's going to be needed is, David, you're going to have to jump over this roof to get to the next one. Okay, uh, so how how do the rules of uh, chase work since we've never done this before? It's basically going to be an extended contest. There's going to be a different number of successes that you need in order to win. I'm going to choose a number of successes between two and five based on the complexity of the task and the importance to the story for the contest. And then each participant rolls once per beat, and the first to get the final success wins. And then ties are broken with nudges and uh, a couple of different things. The f- contest will start now. Uh, Brian, what did you get to jump up onto the roof? I got three sixes, a four, and two ones. Yeah, that'd be a really easy task for a coin shot. So everybody's going to get an extra dice for this next roll as well. Quick question. Yep. Uh, I don't know whether or not Tony has line of sight, but if he does, he would be rioting the the guy we're pursuing his sense of tiredness. Okay. So uh, we'll go nice. ahead and make that a success, uh, or make that one of the uh, your action for this next beat. Okay. Lord Falcom, he's going to try and throw something at you as you try and jump over the okay. roof towards uh, him. What's he throwing at me? Uh, just like a random piece of something that was on this roof. Like how big? What? What's it weigh? Like, we'll say that it was like a, a big piece of board that somebody was using to patch up a hole. Okay, in the so roof. it's like a frisbee coming at me. Uh, like maybe a two by four. So you can go ahead and roll your physique to right. oppose. And it. is this, is this like combat where I have to save some back for the next text? Nope, not oh. at all. <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to say as, like, Lord Falcom, like, gets his feet on the roof, he's going to uh, slam back a, a vial of metal, probably just as Taj Mail's hopping up, and he is ready. Uh, I'd, I'd like to try and catch the 2 by 4 and you know how uh, shot putters do their thing, where they, where they like, spin around? Yeah. He's going to try and catch this board, yep. and throw it right back, but twice the strength. Okay, so you get to roll all ten then, and then if you can uh, get some, uh, at least two nudges, then we'll say you manage to pull that off as you oh, jump okay. across the roof. Is that accounting the bonus like, die? I, yeah. I'm not dies. worried yep. about okay. chasing him as long as I can see him. Like, as as long as I see Tajmil next to me, I know he's the better person to, like, catch up to this guy. I'm Trying to, like... Well, he was kind of waiting for you to, like, come after him to jump over. So he's he's gonna wait until you jump over to throw it at you midair. Dude, if you pull this off, you'll be like a cat twisting in midair. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I got a pair of fours and just one nudge. I do have four ones. So we'll say with that one nudge, um, you definitely beat him. It's like his his throw kind of like made it wobble, and so it goes right next to you. So what you manage to do is like snatch it out of midair and then like do kind of a half flip, and you actually put it down on in between the two roofs as a bridge. So that way uh, Tajmil doesn't even need to use his allomancy to get over. Could I instead drop it down because I know I have my two teammates in the alleyways? And I'd like to, like, kind of angle it wedged in the alleyway so they could maybe climb up it easily. Is that possible? Uh, not with one nudge. Because I just don't think it would be long enough. And then uh, we're going to go ahead, and I'm kind of not using the wits to go in order for this contest, but mostly because we're going in the order that people reacted to him. So we'll go to Tajmil next. Or actually, no, um, no, then it would be... Uh, your turn, Falcom, because that oh, was his action. so that was just my reaction to his action. All right. Um, yep. Is there anything on the roof? Like, We'll say there's like another uh, another couple boards and maybe a hammer. He's going to pick up the hammer. <laughs> and <laughs> it, he is going to throw that as violently as he can. He's trying to kneecap this fool. He, he, 
He is he is very okay. upset that he continues <laughs> to run in the face of adversity. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy's just trying to keep r- outrunning your hammer. So uh, he's not a fan okay. of the Mario Bros. All right, so I, do I have any modifiers to this? Okay. Uh, no. I have four, four, or three fours and a nudge. <laughs> yeah, you, you got him. Do I bust his knee? Like, <laughs> is it broken or does he just trip and fall? Uh, so he trips and he falls off of the roof. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, like, he, you kind of catch him in the back of the knee as he was getting ready to jump. And his foot, as he leaps up, catches the edge of the roof, and he staggers forward and crashes down in between the next two buildings and comes to a thud at the bottom of the next alley. Hope he's not dead. And meanwhile, Tony, like, sees this, and he's like, damn, nailed it! (laughs) (laughs) All right, Tajmil, that brings us to your action. Okay, so I'm going to go over and see what if he's still alive. or what? Whatever you want to do. You just saw him fall between these alleys. Okay. You guys have I'm, two successes now. Uh, I'm going to set my bird down and see what it does, since the chase seems to be over at this point. Uh, it's not over yet. Oh, it's not? Nope. I thought he crashed down. Uh, contests happen until you hit the number of successes that I have uh, set it at. Oh, shoot. So then- But I am I taking guess... a die away from his next roll because of that uh, nudge that David got. So I'd pursue him to see if I could- uh, uh, Get cl- get closer to the person that took off. All right. So, uh, are you gonna just like run across the bridge and then jump down and use like a your allomancy to get a soft landing? Maybe. Yeah. Sure. All right. Go ahead and roll that and add one for the bridge that uh, t- uh, Lord Falcom set up for you. All right. I got two fives, a four, a two, a one, and a six. All right. Yeah. So you uh, come down right next to this guy. Um, just as he's scrambling up to his feet, because he um, could not beat that even if he wanted to. So then, could he, uh, or could I? Is he within close enough range for me to? Well, that was your uh, beat for this round. Oh, okay, all right. I set the successes at four, so you guys okay. just need one more success to bring this contest to a close, which brings us to uh, Tony. All right, do I do I get a bonus roll or die too? Uh, yep. We'll say that he has too. since he was surprised by Tajmil landing next to him. Oh, yeah. And you also get, um, you get two bonus die. One for Merida, one for Tajmil. And he loses a die. And we'll say for the sake of simplicity that you've managed to run up to the back of the alley where he is. Cool. And, and as he rounds the corner, he immediately slows down to like an actual stroll to try and make it look like he just happened to keep up without even trying. <laughs> <laughs> Merida sighs from behind him saying it. Oh no! <laughs> just just one and a nudge. Uh, okay, let me roll. But you did get a pair of ones? Yes. Well, he still can't roll anything, so... Wait, he can't roll anything? I thought you always could at least roll two. Oh no, I mean, he, he rolled his three, but his three dice just aren't doing anything. Yeah! What were you trying to riot? Uh, his sense of tiredness. Okay, so yeah, he just, he looks back at you, and then he looks at Tajmil, and he looks up at Lord Falcom, and we'll say that, Falcom, you've picked up another hammer, mm. and, like, you just kind of, like, pound your hand with it, and he just, oh, yeah. he just sits back down. <laughs> like, ah, uh, I just, you guys are crazy. Crazy good. <laughs> Wait till you see my bird, buddy boy. As soon as, soon as this guy starts speaking, like, I'm going to come down and try and do, like, a superhero landing, like, fist, like, into the ground, just, like, stabilize myself and okay, roll just it. glare at this man. Oh, do I have to really roll that? Yeah, you're, you're going for style points here. I got a pair of fours and... So, style. yeah, you do the classic superhero landing with a backflip. I'm not trying to do a backflip. I'm not ostentatious. I mean, I think the arrogance is just about the power. You know, like, he comes down just glaring daggers into his eyes. He wants to just be intimidating as possible. Like, that was nothing. 
<laughs> okay, you guys are super crazy. What the <laughs> rust? <laughs> Leave me alone, man. Leave me. I'm sorry. I won't. I won't follow you anymore. Jeez. Don't hurt me. <laughs> if you don't tell me exactly why you've been following us right now, Fent. You're going it to was meet Fent. This. It was Fent. He paid me a lot. You're going to give us everything that he gave you, and you're going to take us to him immediately. By the way, I like them shoes you're wearing. Why don't you I, give I me don't them I don't carry kicks? my gold with me. <laughs> I, I don't know how to find him. He just hired me to follow you guys. Look, I just, I was just spying on you. I didn't hurt you. Please, leave me alone. Look, it's been a really long day. Everybody has been through a lot, but please give me your shoes. He, Can he I get a shoe shoes from off? Him? And he starts sobbing and he throws them at your feet. I grin widely. Tony, Tony's like, have some heart, Tajwil. Can't you see this man is in distress? I'm seeing a therapist for it. It's hard. I I know the perfect recipe to solve this this <laughs> issue. And Tony reaches into his hat and he pulls out <laughs> fluffles to give to the man so he can hold me. So here, this always cheers me up. And he immediately starts rioting his affection again. <laughs> as soon as Lord Falcombe sees the rabbit, he's, he's just gonna walk away. <laughs> and I'm gonna walk up to him, and I'm gonna grab, like, go down his level, grab his, like, shirt, pull him close, get really close up to his ear and say, you should leave spying to the professionals. Next time I see you spying on me, you'll pay. And just push him back and walk back. He clutches Fluffles to his chest and just starts bawling as he pets the rabbit pelt that's been wrapped around him. And, and Tony comes up and starts just rubbing his back very sympathetically. <laughs> Sympathetic or sensually? <laughs> sympathetically. You know, like, there, there, that's okay. Oh, You'll be fine. I swear, I don't know anything else. He 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 paid me lots of boxings, and he told me to look for the guy in the top hat and the really angry, poor nobleman. And that's all I know. I don't know how to find him or anything else. Please don't hurt me. I'm going to make a deal with you. You tell me your name and we'll let you go. My, my name? What's your name? My name is Terrace. That's that's the code name I go by, at least. It's my underground name. Listen up, Terrace. I think you should get out of the underground if you can't handle this. I don't think you're cut out for it. He threw a hammer at me, and it hurt. Yeah, and there's a lot more that could be done. How do you feel about broken hands? Tony's like, hey, hey, come on. The man is already broken. And then he starts rioting the man's sense of, of peace. And I turned to Tony, I said, there's more things that can be broken in the underground. Tony just kind of scoots around to the other side, putting the man on the ground in between him and Merida. I don't think you understand what you're doing. I'm trying to help him not go any more pain. A uh, quick clarif clarification. When you when you started rioting his sense of peace, did you stop rioting his affection? Absolutely. Tony is not that quick on the beat. He forgot. <laughs> okay. He looks down and actually looks at Fluffles. <laughs> And, like, he stops crying, and this look of absolute horror crosses his face, and he just gently picks up Fluffles and puts him down on the ground next to him and just kind of scoots away. Oh, okay, you're done with him, I'll put him away. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, like, scoot over to the front of, like, the exit till, like, I'm done with my speech, and he agrees. So, like, he can't get away from me. Uh, he, he's just crying inconsolably at this point, again. Like, he's just, even with the rioting, he's just so upset. Like, he, he's, he's catatonic. He's not responsive. Well, guys, what do we think we should do now? Go after Fent, or the Coloss, or the kidnapped person? What are you talking about, Coloss? And, like, Falco rounds back around the corner. He disappeared behind when Fluffles came out. And you see him more angry than you've ever seen him. Before. All right, so here's the deer deal. Blah. We heard rumors about Coloss, and, well, it was written on Tony's paper. So we have that option or the others. What do you guys think? 
I think that sounds like a Grand Slam plan. I don't think this group is ready to handle any cold loss. I've seen what they no, can do, do in do the it. past. I'm a pretty good coin shot. That's how I got my bird. Tajmil, I have no problem with you. But the other two are just dead weight, and they'll end up dead. So then we can uh, loot their corpses. I don't like being dead weight. Maybe, maybe he, uh, Falcone's right there. I think, I think he's got a better plan. I think, personally, I don't like being betrayed by Fence, and I want to get revenge. I would like to go kill every single one of those Coloss pieces of scrap metal. Let's get him. I bet those things are chock full of gold. But I know when there's more important things. So I think we should see about rescuing this kidnapped uh, nobleman. Because that has the most Ooh. direct correlation to our end goal. The entire but reason. But can we're I can I break here. off though? Because the Coloss killed okay, both my parents. So I kinda have a vendetta against these things and Lord Falcon does them. too. For sure. I say, let me at him, let me at him. So let's have a vote. Who votes on the Coloss? I do. I'm the only one. Yeah, one. So, Fent, which I raise my hand. That's one. And so, the kidnapped person it is. So, we're going to go after the kidnapped person. Aww. Did you guys even vote for the kidnapped person? I, uh, as soon as she would have said that, Lord Falcombe would have raised his hand as well. Yeah, but there are only three options. One vote for Colas, one vote for Fent. That leaves the other two for the last option. Well, I and there's still Tony's Eric Keller just- as well. I, I forget, what exact information did we have on Eric Keller? Embarrassing secret. They're the one noble house that has a bead of ATM. They're keeping it off-site, maybe at one of their warehouses. And uh, Merida was able to put together an embarrassing secret about them from the information that she has. Yeah. Okay. And didn't I do something? I, I beat up one of their guys in the bar fight, wasn't it? Yep, and uh, you will have a disadvantage in the future in any social conflict against them. Okay. So, abducted person or Eric Keller? I th- I think this abducted person is our best bet of because we yeah, we could not? search around Eric Keller's warehouses for months, years, and never find anything. It's one single bead. But if we do this one thing, Lord Spook himself will give us a bead of ADM. Unless they're lying. Why would the Lord rule, well, not the Lord ruler, but the Lord spook betray us like that? He's never been like that in the past. Do we know it's from him? I don't know. Yeah, they, that, that was what the town crier was saying, wasn't it, Trevor? Yeah, but uh, Tony doesn't know that. Okay, well, I, I would explain that to Tony. Oh, okay. When that crier was slanking away, and you said he whispered something, were either, I mean, could I use my uh, one thing where I can go back in time or whatever? That's more for like a single action or a single roll. Gotcha. He can go back in time? Because his spirit is so high, he's so connected with fate, basically, that he can change what is supposed to happen enough to redo a single roll, basically. Yeah, I don't think Tony has enough spirit for that. (laughs) Oh, actually, Tony, you can uh, do some of the cool resources ones. I think you can assemble forces. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, because you have six or more dice, so you can assemble forces with your eight resources. That's wow. Cool. Uh, actually. Yeah, let's go after the Colossus, guys. Come on, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we wouldn't know that, like, as characters. Yeah, so, I mean, if eventually you do want to fight some Colossus, Tony, you could b- bring a small army to bear. Or try to. Assuming someone is smart enough to tell him to do it. But just to metagame a little bit, all you know from that uh, fact sheet is that there are rumors of a Coloss tribe. And it says absolutely nothing about, you know, what they're doing or if they have ATM or anything like that. You know, it's completely unrelated to what you guys are doing. Yeah, but forget that they have Coloss blood in them. You know, like I do have a a backstory, at least that somewhat involves i guess revenge against these creatures what did you guys decide the plan was um i guess we're going to try and find kidnap person 
Well, it, it depends on what Tony voted for, because, like, I've, everyone voted for something different. Tony did not vote. Who wants to go after the kidnapped person? I do. Tony raises his hand. All right, so the kidnapped person it is. You two know the most knowledge, as I point to um, Taj Mule and Falcone. You have the most information, so you lead us. Okay. Uh, Lord Falcom is just going to uh, look at Merida and say, well, the first course of action is figuring out what exactly is going on. We're a little sparse for details, and we can't exactly go to talk to the Lord Ru- uh, the, the Lord Mistborn right now because there are rioters outside of his uh, place of residence. Uh, could you possibly scour your informants and find out more about this kidnapped noble and who might have had a reason to kidnap him? I think the easier way is just to find out why they're rioting and try to talk to them and get them to go away, maybe, or do something else first. Well, I don't think we're going to fix thousands of years of class struggle with a quick conversational piece. And, and you could probably still like make it into the gates. And they're not like they're not like burning down the town, but they're like, you know, uh, a tea party basically. You know, o- occupy lo- occupy the Lord Mistborn. Uh Tony chimes in at this point and says, "If you need a distraction, that is my specialty. I can put on a magic act." <laughs> Pulls out the mist rabbit in the middle of the crowd. "Look guys, it's fluffles." <laughs> that, that's part of the act, of course, but my dear lady, I am a professional magician. I have many talents under my hat. I like your idea, Tony. Let's do it. All right. I think that's where we're going to stop for tonight. Uh, before we finish out the episode, let's go ahead and award some more advancements. I want to give everybody in the group going to get two for this session. Lord Falcom, you're going to get an extra one for being such a rusting badass. Tony, you're going to get an extra one for the such an incredible use of fluffles. <laughs> and then uh Merida, you're going to get one as well for doing such a great job trying to convince this poor hapless spy that he was just in the very wrong profession at the very wrong time. <laughs> so that's it for tonight. Thank you all for listening very much, and I hope you join in for our very next episode. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Adios. Thank you. Mistborn and all related properties are owned by Brandon Sanderson and Dragonsteel Entertainment. The Mistborn Adventure Game is a product of Crafty Games. Special thanks to Steve Argyle for letting us use his artwork for the logo, and to Boardroom Design for putting the logo together for us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, at LLOS Podcast. Or give us an email at lostlegendsofscadriel at gmail.com. We hope that you'll like and share and give us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.